Hello, my name's Morgan, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast. As you may or may not know, there was a measles outbreak at Disneyland at the beginning of the year. It was a pretty big deal, and it brought the topic of mandatory vaccinations into the limelight again. Currently, parents are not required to have their child vaccinated, but the debate as to whether or not it should be mandatory is once again raging on. Before you can choose a side, you need to get all your facts. So today, I'll be talking about viruses, how they infect the human body, and how vaccines work to protect you from specific diseases. A virus is a small infectious agent that replicates only inside of living cells. As of right now, scientists are not sure where viruses came from. There are a few theories about it, but in general, scientists don't really know for sure. So there's two basic things that all viruses have. They may come in a variety of shapes, but all viruses will have these two components. The first is a nucleic acid or the genetic material. The virus needs a list of instructions on how to make copies of itself. So this can be in the form of RNA or DNA, and it can be single-stranded or double-stranded. The second part is a protein coat called a capsid. The capsid basically provides protection for the nucleic acid. So all viruses have these two parts. Now, a lot of viruses also have an envelope around it. And what that envelope is, is a lipid bilayer. If you remember from cell biology, a lipid bilayer is made up of two layers of phospholipids. And the purpose of that envelope is just to mimic the outside of regular cells so it makes it easier for the virus cell to attach to the host cell to begin replication. So how does a replis vi how does a virus replicate itself since it's not considered a living organism and cannot replicate on its own? Well, when a virus is ready to make copies of itself, it finds a host cell and begins the lytic cycle. As you can see from the diagram, the virus attaches itself to the outside of the host cell and injects its DNA or RNA into the cell. Since the virus cell doesn't have the ability to make its own copies, it has to use the machinery of the host cell. Once the parts of the virus are constructed, based on the genetic info provided by the DNA and the RNA, the viruses can assemble themselves and then lice, which means to break, out of, the, um, out of the cell, and then they can go off and infect other cells. So you can see that it doesn't take much to create an entire viral outbreak. Now there's a second part of the replication cycle called the lysogenic cycle. And basically, the virus will hop between the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle. Here in the lysogenic cycle, you can see that it is the virus DNA is basically just hanging out. It's just waiting for a good time to jump back into that lytic cycle. So here it injects its DNA into the DNA of the host cell, and then as that host cell replicates itself the, and its DNA, it keeps making more and more copies of the host cell DNA with that viral DNA in it. So an example of this is chickenpox. When you get chickenpox, the virus is just laying dormant inside the lysogenic cycle, and if it hops back into the lytic cycle, that's when you get a disease called shingles, and it's really painful, and it tends to affect o older people. And another example would be cold sores, which is a type of high herpes virus. It's always there, and when your immune system gets depleted, it goes from the lysogenic cycle into that lytic cycle, and then that's when you see the cold sores pop out. So now that you have an idea of what a virus is and how it replicates, I'm going to show you, show you a short am animation of a virus replicating.
So from the video, you can see how the virus attaches itself to the host cell, injects its DNA, and makes more viruses, and then they break out of the cell. So now let's talk about ways we can prevent viral outbreaks. One way is vaccines. Here's a short video clip that I think explains the process pretty well. An illness can be caused by pathogens, bacteria and viruses that cause disease. These foreign invaders can enter the body in different ways, such as through an open wound, by inhalation, or through contact with mucous membranes of the eyes, nose, or mouth. If your body becomes infected by a pathogen, the white blood cells circulating in the blood go through a trial and error period to determine the best way to kill the organisms. During this period, the body is sick with symptoms of the illness. When the white blood cells determine how to destroy it, they create memory cells to handle future attacks of that same pathogen. Vaccination is a way to trigger the body's immune response without becoming sick. The vaccine contains weak or dead organisms that usually do not cause illness. The body is able to destroy the pathogen in the vaccine and produce memory cells. When the body develops immunity to a specific pathogen, immunization has occurred. If the body is ever exposed to the same pathogen in the future, the memory cells react quickly without a trial and error period. This allows the body to destroy the pathogen efficiently before it can cause illness. So to recap how a vaccine works, there's the weakened form of the disease that or a dead and it is injected into the body and then the body reacts to it and creates antibodies and memory cells. So now that if so now if the real disease were to invade the body, then the antibodies would be all ready and the body would be able to pounce on it right away and you wouldn't even know that you were ever sick. So that's basically it. I hope it was helpful. I want to thank you for watching. And here are some additional resources you can check out if you'd like more information. I have these as well as a quick quiz available on my Edmodo website. And I encourage you to check it out. So thanks again and have a great day.